everybody welcome to elevate people we're thankful you're joining us today for church we want to just welcome you to worship with us dive into the word together here's what you can do right now is you can invite somebody to church share this on all your social media platforms share this on your page send out the youtube link there's nothing better than bringing somebody to church with you today and you can do that right now we're about to dive into some worship together and then dive into the word. We have a core value here at Elevate. We love to say that worship is our response to God's awesomeness. And I know this, God is about to do something amazing in your life today. I promise you, go all in, wherever you are. Just treat it like you're in the house of God. Stand up, worship with us, dive into the word of God, and I promise you, you will leave today better because you did. We love you guys so much. Still what you do 
and we turn from our wicked ways and we believe in our hearts that you will you will heal our land Lord 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 yes you will heal our land Lord you will heal our land Lord that you will heal our
affirmations of our hearts. We declare that we'll never be the same. We'll never be the same. What's up, everybody? Happy Resurrection Sunday is Easter. Can you believe it? We want to what got all my friends here. Let's go. We're all hanging out here with you. We're so good to see all of you. And uh, wherever you are, in your home, your living room, your phone, your iPad, your computer, man, we glad you are here hanging out with us today. Got some of my Elevate fam here. So whether you're Elevate family or whether you're ex extended family and you're joining us from all over, we're glad that you're here. And I promise you this, we're going to have a fun day today. I hope you enjoyed that worship. I know it was amazing. Come on, wasn't that worship just incredible? Like the worship was off the hook. And so I hope you felt it the same way that we felt it right here in the room. And I just know this. I want to remind you. I don't know what your world looks like right now. I don't know what's going on with your life. But I know this. God is in the middle of it. He is in the center of it all, even in the midst of what is all is happening and with the virus and the news and just in just everything, the craziness. This seems like it's just I know it's a little bit bigger than the norm, but how many know there's been more bad days for sure, right? Like this isn't something new that's under the sun. And so we just wanted to remind you of that and just remind you that man, God is with you and he's with you and your family. And I believe leaving here today. We're going to be able to leave stronger and better than we've ever been. Y'all believe that? All right. And these guys are going to help me with it. So today um, I'm going to be hanging out. Actually, if you got your Bibles, you can turn with me in 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. I'm going to be hanging out there. So even if you got your phones, pull it out there or pull it out in your Bible. And, um, and we're going to get there in just a moment. But if you're taking notes, I want to talk to you about this one topic. I want to talk to you about the invisible enemy the invisible enemy and here we are we facing what's considered an invisible enemy enemy with the virus and all this going on but how many know this ain't nothing new to god right yeah. this is actually what i will remind us this isn't nothing new to us as a believer the bible says we battle not against flesh and blood right yeah. but against principalities like there's been an invisible enemy that's been trying to knock us down for years but it ain't gonna happen right yeah. We believe that, and, and I know no matter where we are in life, no matter if you're here today watching and you're brand new in Jesus, uh, maybe you just happen to be swiping through Facebook or, or going through and see the YouTube link, you're like, man, who are these guys? And, and, and you're watching right now, you don't really know what the Lord is all about, you don't know what God is all about. You're like, man, maybe last night was the worst night of your life. Maybe you're watching right now and you high as a kite. We're glad you're here, right? Or whether you're, or whether you're a seasoned believer and you're like, man, I believe that we can leave here stronger. We all come from different walks of life. We're full, we're empty in every way. I like to think about this when I love to describe kind of what Easter is all about. I, I can't help think about um, whenever we're driving. Now, just real quick, help me out, like with, with those of you, and you can like raise your hand right there when you're in the living room, but whenever you got your gas tank, how many of you guys freak out and you go ahead and you fill up your gas tank when it's about a three-fourths full? Anybody? You're okay. There's my overachiever. There's my planner right there. Come on, all of you, like if you're three-fourths, like, oh my God, pandemic's coming. I got to fill up, right? I got to fill up super fast. And okay, how about the rest of you? How many fill up about halfway? Okay, no, all right, come on, I'm starting to find my people. How many fill up about a quarter of the way? Come on, anybody? Okay, just a few, uh, so, it depends on the situation, right? I'm seeing that, okay? How many of you wait to fill up your gas tank when that dial gets right on the E? Come on, anybody close? Like, so, okay, come on, that's great. But then where's the rest of my people? Hold on, right? That you don't wait till the E, but you wait until that light comes on, right? Come on, and then you got at least another... 15 or 16 miles. Come on, somebody. Am I right? Like, like, and if you wait past that, then you're the one that we've seen stranded on the side of the road, right? And we've all been there. That's the, that's the best way I know how to describe lost and hurting people is that we all come from different lives. We all realize that, hey, I'm feeling empty. I got to fill back up quick. Some of us get halfway. Some of us dive in and let it go further than we've ever let it go before. Sometimes what happens is we let it get all the way to empty, past empty, 
where pain, depression, and hurt and pain comes to where we're stranded on the side of the road to where we're saying, can anybody just stop and help me? And I think, I think that whether you're watching here today, I think we are all fit into one of those areas. In other words, if we would agree, we're all hurting and we all need a little bit more of God. Amen on that, right? So whether you need a little bit of a, just a recharge or maybe you're watching today and you're stranded on the side of the road, you're like, how in the world did I get to this place? How in the world did I find myself here again? I had no idea my marriage could get this way. I know that my, my finances, my family, my job, my relationships with, with my friends, like, like how did I get addicted again? Like my, I made that investment. I thought it was the best business investment in the world. I thought launching that business was it. I thought I heard from you, Lord, but everything but good has taken place and you feel empty. All of us have a little bit of emptiness somewhere. And the key to a relationship with the Lord is what are we doing to stay full. And there's an invisible enemy. We all have an invisible enemy. We all do. There's the invisible enemy of pain. There's the invisible enemy of hurt. There's the invisible enemy of depression. There's the invisible enemy like, how you doing? Good. Too blessed to be stressed. No, you stressed, bro. You stressed. The only person that ain't stressed is my man right here with the, with the mustache. Blake, come here, Blake. Come here, bro. Blake. So everybody, come on, look at this stash right here. Let's go. Give, come on, give him, yeah, give him the, yeah, the anchor set right there. That's my man. If I had a stash like that, bro, and I, is it real or fake? It's real. It's real. It's real. Okay, it's real. okay, that's good. Good, good. Let's do a poll. 50% believe, 50% don't, but no, uh, but, but it's, I would not have any kind of worry if I had a stash like that. Let's go. But, but the deal is we all have an invisible, we have an invisible enemy if we get down to it. And even if you don't think it's bad or you have a, a secret, and we love to say you're only as sick as your secret. And there's an invisible enemy. There's something we're not telling people. There's something we're not telling the Lord. How, how, how do we get through this life? How do we make life better? How are we reminded that the cross and what Jesus did is to address what we're trying to hide, that he came to expose to say, hey, I came for that. What you're calling is hidden. I'm saying I came for that. What you're afraid of the most, that's what I came for, and that's what I'm here for. And so how do we fight for this? How do we, how do we get better within this? And I really think of really three main points. And the first thought, if you want to write this down in your home, the first thought, how, how do you really defeat what is coming against you? That's the deal we're asking. Like, how do I get past this pain? How do I get past this struggle? What, what do I do with this? The first thought is this, is you got to break the pattern. Like, you got to break the pattern. I guarantee you that if you did it just once, waiting until the light gets below E, right? If you did this one, you realize that, oh, I can do this a whole lot more. <laughs> and all of a sudden, you developed a very unhealthy pattern. Am I right? It's, it's like it's amazing how and the enemy is so tricky. Like, he'll literally, he'll let you, like, get by with something and think you made it. But then all of a sudden, he's now tricked you into an unhealthy pattern that's actually bringing you down instead of building you up. And, and we, we have that, it, whether, whatever it is. One of the hot topics is, is, is anxiety and, and mental health. Right now, they're saying that one in every five people deal with mental health and anxiety. Like they're struggling. And I don't know about you, but I think that's a, like I can look around this room right now and it's one of us in this room. Like one in every five, look around your living room right now and just count. It may be one in the room. It may be two in the room. It may be three in the room. Like if you think about that perspective, but here's what trips me out. If you go back and you study it, then you ask a secular study says, hey, what is the cause of anxiety? You know what they say? We don't know. They, they can only guess and they estimated it. Maybe it's social media. Maybe it's bad sleep. Come on, how many know that melatonin? Let's go, right? Like, 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 and then here's another thing they said that blew me away. They said, maybe it's geared towards underreporting, meaning you're not telling somebody about it. You're not telling the Lord about it. You, there's an invisible enemy taking you out and is bringing, and you're trying to hide it into the depths of your heart. And you're trying to hide your pain and hide your struggle. And you're trying to do it on your own. And the whole purpose of the cross, he says, I'm here to address what you call invisible. And I'm here to say, I came for that. But you, all of a sudden, what happens is we get into this pattern and we, 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 we start hurting. And, 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 and you start, don't know how to express it. It's kind of like I was thinking about the story of, um, of a guy who went shopping with his toddler 
uh, during holiday season. And he went through holiday season, and uh, how many know during the holiday season, it gets a little bit crazy, right? And he and decided to go shopping on the last night of Christmas, Christmas Eve. And so he went shopping and looking around, and, and he's walking around, and he's like, Albert, it's going to be okay. Albert, Albert, it's going to be all right. Albert, we're going to make it. Albert, we're going to make it home. And the toddler's just going nuts, going crazy, screaming, kicking. He's like, Albert, it's going to be all right. Things are going to happen. Albert, it's going to be okay. And this elderly lady walks up to, 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 the, to the father and says, sir, I'm just blown away on how well you're handling and treating your son, Albert. And he goes, ma'am, the boy ain't Albert. I'm Albert. You know, it's like, so it's like, it's kind of like, how many have been Albert? You've been Albert. Where it's just like, like you, you, like you trying to coach yourself and, and, and everybody else think it's all perfect. But on the inside, there's an invisible enemy trying to take you down. Yeah. And what's happened is if you're not careful, no matter if you're a quarter of a tank empty, half a tank or three quarters of a tank, if you don't get full again, and this is the beauty of what the cross reminds us. If we don't get full again, you will jump into some bad habits that keep you at a place that you don't want to be. And here's what will happen is that if you here's what will happen. If you don't break the pattern of bad habits, the enemy will use that pattern to break you. If you don't break that pattern, the enemy will use that pattern to break you. And all of a sudden you find yourself in situations that you never thought. But the good news, can I tell you there's some good news, right? Yeah. The good news is that our God is still alive. Yeah. He still sits on the throne. Am I right? Amen. He's still the same yesterday, today, and forever. And right now, whether you've, you've fallen into a bad pattern, today in Jesus' name, we can break that pattern, right? Yeah. And God can do some incredible things. Here's the second thought. Second thought. You guys getting this? Come on, right? That's good, right? Like, like, I hope you're getting this at home. The second thought is this, is we love to say this. We believe in worship. We love the core value in our churches, man. Worship is our response to God's awesomeness. We serve a good God. Whether we feel it in the moment or we don't, we know he is a good God. Here's the second point if you want to write it down. Is, is if you're dealing with it like an invisible enemy or having a hard time, is, is this. Rejoicing is your reloading rejoicing is your reloading. We love to say choose joy, but we love to say, say worship. Like, come on, how many love some good worship, right? Like, it's what it's all about. Like, I literally tell people, and I'm, I'm telling you, like, like, even if you got to fight to just get to church, like some people, you just got to live for Sundays. Even though we love to say it elevate, we don't live for Sundays, right? Sundays launch us out to be better Monday through Saturday. But for some people, home life ain't good. Home life isn't, isn't great right now. And I literally was like, sometimes I was like, man, if you can just make it to Sunday. And many times we just want to sit at home. We don't want to, we don't feel like getting up. But the moment you walk into the house of God, right? And this is why we wanted to lead with worship before we came and preached to you. It's because as worship plays in your house, there's just a reloading of your spirit, right? That takes place. You can't describe it. You don't understand it. This is why, like, we need, a, we, need a, we need to kill the news sometimes. We need to kill the noises of the world and what it's saying. And we just need to crank up some worship. Am I right? Like, like, like pull out, if you don't have a player, or you don't know what some worship songs are, like, pull out the vault. Come on, right? Am I right? Come on. Anybody remember some old school worship songs? Hello, what are some good old school words? Y'all remember, like, even if you don't know all the music, you just know one line. Like, you know I can only imagine. But you don't know what the rest of the song is saying. I can only imagine. What it? I can only imagine, right? Like, like, like you feel it, right? Like, what about some old school from the ball? Like you grew up. Anybody remember? They're like, look what the Lord has done. Come on, look. Come on, Lord has done. Help me out. You hear my body? You touch my something? Okay, you help me. And then it goes just, just it. Okay, all right, that was useless. All right, but. Y'all get my point. Like, find something. I guarantee you, there's a hymn you know. Yeah. Yeah. I guarantee you, everybody knows Amazing Grace. There's, there's worship deep inside of you. How do I know that? Because God built you that way. Yeah. There's worship in you. Like, I could break down to you in Isaiah where the Lord literally built us to be houses of worship. You are built with worship. You are built with stringed instruments. You are built with percussion. You are built, the Bible says, with vocal cords, which are like wind instruments. Like you're literally built for worship. Everything you need to get breakthrough when you're facing a war, worship is your weapon. Rejoicing is reloading. Are you with me? So I don't know where you're facing. You're dealing with the invisible enemy that nobody can see. Maybe you're awake going to bed with pain. 
but you, you can go to bed with peace if you choose to finish yeah. your night with worship. Yeah. Yeah. Like, 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 let it be the strength behind everything. Mm. Then my last thought for you here today, when I think about how do we take on an invisible enemy? Anytime there's an enemy, right? Like we got to think about there's a fight. You realize that, right? We are in a fight. The Bible says the reason why we celebrate the cross is because it proved the fact that the devil said he came to steal, kill, and destroy. But the cross and the story of Easter shows us that he failed in his mission, right? But it reminds us this. It reminds us that we are in a fight. He doesn't want you to win. He doesn't want you to succeed. He, he doesn't want you to think that you can have the victory, right? You in a fight, you got to throw the punch. We rock you, Adrian, hey, right, like, like, we in this thing. And so here's my last point that I want you guys to get. I want you to remember, no matter what you're facing, if it's an invisible enemy or whatever's taking out, you always have the last punch. Come on, we got the last punch. We got the last opportunity. When I was thinking about this, I was thinking about um, just the other day, I was actually playing superheroes with my son and uh, my five-year-old. Come on, you're never too old to play with a good superhero. Come on, am I right? And so I was playing with my son and, uh, and we were talking about this and fighting back and forth and, and he brought up an amazing point. My son just started preaching, but I can't preach this point without some of my friends. So I got me and my boy Shazam. Let's go right here, yeah. happening. And then I got his, apparently his evil, the guy, his evil twin, not evil twin, but the guy who's trying to take him out. My man, I don't know what he looks like. Yeah, right here. I don't know who it is. I don't know if it's the guy from Batman. We don't even know his name. He's an invisible enemy, right? Hey, 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 no no pun intended. Come on. Hey, no, I got the cheesy joke. Okay. And so here's what my son, here's what my son would say. We were actually playing superheroes and I immediately grabbed the superhero and I started immediately taking out the bad guy, like taking him out, taking him out, taking him out. And my son literally stops me. Can you believe I'm preaching on Easter with superheroes? Let's go. All right. But, but, but my son stopped me and said, Dad, no, that's not, how, that's not how it goes. He said, he said, the bad guy always throws the first punch and beats the good guy first. But the good guy always comes back and beats the bad guy Every single time. Come on, do it. And I literally, isn't it cheesy? But come on, Shazam, let's go. And so I literally like thought about that and I'm like, oh my God, this is it. Like we're dealing with the invisible enemy, right? But even though we're dealing with the invisible enemy, people didn't even understand that there was a threat of an enemy unless there, until there was the cross. They didn't understand why Jesus came. They didn't understand what he was talking about. And nobody understood the threat of an invisible enemy until we saw a visible savior. Come on, are you with me, right? And we have the cross showed us that. And the cross reminds us that even though you may be taken out, right, with the first punch and the enemy may throw a punch, we got the last punch, right? We got the victory. And as it says in 1 John 4, the one who lives in you is what? Greater than he that lives in the world. It doesn't matter what's coming against you. It's not near as powerful as the Jesus that is living on it. Come on, are you all with me? You got the last punch. You got, you have the last punch. And I love what the cross talks about. The cross reminds us about the power of the resurrection. And the power of the resurrection is this. It says in scripture, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is the same power that lives in you and lives in me. And friends, you need to be reminded about that today. That's what Easter is all about. It's to remind us that it doesn't matter what's coming against you. It's not near as powerful as the Jesus that lives on the inside of you. You literally have the power to change your situation. You can change your marriage right now. You can change your family right now. You got high last night. You're on empty in an addiction again. The same power of deliverance and healing that happened then is the same power of healing that can happen right now. Amen. You're dealing with the invisible enemy of anxiety and depression and suicide. And you're struggling with bitterness and anger. But God is saying, hey, that invisible enemy is why I brought a visible Savior. And this is what the cross is all about. And I want to remind all of you and encourage you to remember, if you got a pattern, let's break the pattern. Rejoicing is our reloading. And we got to remember that you still got the last punch. It's not that we're trying to win. We won. Yes. We've already won. 
and your life is not over, today can be the moment where everything changes for you. And it all starts with a relationship with Jesus. And for some of you, you might be a quarter of a tank, half a tank, like we talked about in the beginning. You might be on empty. I guarantee you, every single one of us, there's a, there's a part of us that we can know Jesus better. There's a part of us to where we're like, you know what? Yep, I did it. I used to do it better this way, but I can do a lot more better in Jesus. Jesus is more than just a name for me. Jesus is a lifestyle. He's a friend and he's a relationship. And if you've never really made Jesus the Lord of your life, what do you got to lose? What are you waiting on? You've tried everything else. Why not try this? This is what it's all about. It's a genuine relationship. And we love to say it elevate, don't we? We love to say that Jesus didn't die to be a part of your top three. He died to be number one in your life. And that starts with the Bible says, is if you confess Jesus as your Lord and your Savior out of your mouth, and you ask him to come into your heart, into your life, God will deal with whatever that invisible pain, whatever it is that you're dealing with. Everything can change in a moment by inviting him in to take the place of what is hurting. That's what the beauty of a relationship with God is all about. He makes what feels bad and he turns it into good. That's what the, the cross reminds us. We win, we will always win. Death, hell, and the grave may try to take us out. The enemy may try to steal some things, kill some things and destroy you but you hold the last punch. We win. God is with you and he's for you, but it starts with a relationship with Jesus. If you're watching here today, I want to ask you to pray this prayer with me. Whether you need to give Jesus, make him the Lord and Savior of your life right now for the first time, or you need to rededicate your life, I want to encourage you right now, this moment, I want you to pray this with me. And I want to encourage you to pray together as a family out loud. Um, uh, and these guys are going to pray with me out loud. Or you can pray quietly if you would like doesn't matter the attitude of your heart is what God sees but let's pray this together everybody say Jesus, Jesus thank you thank you for dying on the cross for me, for dying on the cross for me. thank you thank for shedding your blood for me, for your blood for me. Wash, my wash my sins clean make me new make me, new. Make me whole make me today Jesus, today, Jesus. say that again say today Jesus, today, Jesus. I give you my life it's as simple as that, guys. And Father, I just want to pray for every person that is watching now here too. Every person who just gave their life to Jesus, God, we celebrate that. The Bible says when one comes to heaven, all of heaven throws a party. and We're celebrating with you. But every person here, I don't know your story, but God knows your story. I just want to pray a prayer of blessing over your life, over your marriage, over your household, over every area, Lord God. Whatever it is they're believing for, their finances, their, their job, their business, their their, their children, their parents. God, I don't, I don't, this, maybe there's sickness in their body. I just pray right now, in this moment, they feel your healing touch and your blessing and your joy like never before, God. Father, thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And whatever we're facing, visible or invisible, Jesus, we trust you and we give this to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, 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 amen. Come on, man. Guys, thank you so much. Aren't we thankful that our friends tune in today? We're so glad. Thank you for joining us today on Resurrection Sunday, Easter. It's been an honor to be here with you guys today. And uh, we would love to hear from you. If this blessed you in any way, maybe comment below. Somebody who needs to hear it, share this to your post. Share this on the YouTube channel. Man, everything, let's just be a voice today and continue to remember that Jesus, we love you. We thank you. And family, we miss you. We love you and we can't wait to see you here real soon. Happy Easter. Hey, church family. Hope you enjoyed church today by hanging out with us. You know, we just prayed a salvation prayer and we love to say like we did before that Jesus didn't die on the cross to be a part of your top three, but he died to be number one in your life. And if you just gave your life to Jesus or you rededicated your life, we would love to give you some resources to kind of help you with your next steps in your walk with the Lord. Here's how you can do it. You can text the word Jesus to the number that is on the screen. We'll send you a message. Our team will follow up with you and we'll give you some help on what your best decision that you've made in your life for sure. And then also, if you're looking for more than that, you can actually text 21 days to the number on your screen. And what that'll do is it'll send you daily declarations of hope 
daily encouragement on your phone that you can sign up for by simply texting in 21 days. We'll send you 21 days of hope right there to your phone every day. And also, we would love to pray with you. If you have any kind of prayer request or maybe a praise that we can, we can celebrate with you, make sure you email us family at elevatepeople.tv. And then the last thing is this, we believe in a house of generosity. We can't out give God. Let's give our absolute best. Even during these times, let's not forget to give God our best, no matter what our life looks like. The Bible says to give 10%, but even if you can't do that, don't give them nothing. Start somewhere, start with 1%. 2%. Give something and God will always bring it back greater than what you gave. And the last thing is this, we love to serve our city. And why we, how we love to serve our city is we have a campaign going on called Love Thy Neighbor. We may not can get out and rally together right now, but I wanna encourage you, let's get out right now and get out the doors of your house and love on your neighbor to the right and to the left of you. Daily, we're sending out not only declarations of hope, but different serve ideas on how you can love your neighbor. Make sure you do that by going online to elevatepeople.tv and signing up for our email list. Man, it was so good to see you today. We love you and we'll see you next week.